Hey guys and welcome to Zool Coding. In this video I'll show you how to create lines and outlines in WPF, as well as continuing on from part 1, we will look at exporting all the shapes we've got as an image. Be sure to check out part 1 if you haven't already, where I explain the references and plugins you'll need. As always there'll be linked to all the code in the description down below, I'll be writing this in C Sharp, but there's a VB.net translation available if you follow the link. Since part 1 I've added in some new UI controls that we're going to be working on today, Feel free to use your own UI controls, or whatever's appropriate for your application. Something you might have noticed is that this shape now has an outline on it, and I'll show you how to set that up in just a moment. So let's start by covering lines and outlines. These first three shapes, the rectangle, ellipse and triangle, were covered in part 1, but now I've added in a stroke and stroke thickness property in the XML code, as you can see here. I've also added in a new line shape with the same stroke and stroke thickness properties, but no fill property this time. Let me show you what the line looks like. Also notice I need an x1 and x2 property here. x1 is the start of the line, so 0, and x2 is the end of the line, which is 200 at the moment, so that represents the length of the line here. Let's see the code. Below the code from part 1, I've also set up some new event handlers. Line Color Picker Selected Color Change will update the color of the outline of the selected shape. Thickness Slider Value Change will change the thickness of that outline. Line Effect Radius Click is a click event handler for each of the Line Effect Radio buttons, and this will determine whether the line is solid, dashed, or dotted. And finally, Export Button Click is a click event handler for the Export button, which we'll cover towards the end of the video. Before we start work on that, let's scroll to the top and update the code from part 1 to account for our new line shape. Remembering that we're only showing one shape to the user at a time, when our new line radio button is clicked, we'll show the line shape. But some things like the fill colour picker and the height slider don't apply to lines, so we need to hide these controls if the line shape is selected. At the top here, we initially hide all shapes to reset the display, ensuring the controls we're going to hide are displayed by default. Then down here, we'll hide those controls, not forgetting to update the current shape variable to keep track of the currently selected shape. We also need to update our width slider event handler for our line shape. We simply set the x2 property, which is the end of our line, by the value, times our factor of 25. If the line was a vertical line, we'd use y1 and y2 instead. We don't need to update the height slider or fill color picker event handlers, as they don't apply to lines. So let's move on to the line colour picker. We set the selector colour in a similar way to the fill colour picker. We'll then update the stroke property for all of our shapes, so that if the user changes the shape, the outline colour will be updated already. So let's test it out. If I select the line radio button, the UI controls we don't need disappear, and I can change how long the line is. I can also choose a different colour from the line colour picker like so. So now we set up our lines and outlines, let's customise them a bit. To change the thickness of the line shape, or the outlines on other shapes, we can simply set the stroke thickness property to the value of the slider. We can also change the line from solid to dashed or dotted. We'll start by setting up a double collection to represent the default solid line, which is 1, 0. Then we'll check which radio button is selected. For dashed lines, we'll use a double collection of 4, 4, and that'll represent 4 blocks of stroke and 4 blocks of white space, or the gap between dashes. And for the dotted line, we'll use 2, 2. Then we can apply that to our shapes using the stroke dash array property. Let's run the app and see if it works. So selecting the line shape and moving the thickness slider across, that works as we'd expect. And if I select one of the other shapes, the thickness has been applied correctly to the outline. Let's finish by exporting all of our shapes as an image. To export the shape as an image, we can recreate it as a system.drawing bitmap and then save that bitmap quite easily. We'll need to adjust some of our values though, to ensure the image looks as identical as possible to the shape in the UI. Let's start by creating the variables we'll be using in this event handler for the bitmap height, width, 
color and outline thickness, the bitmap itself and brushes for the fill and outline, as well as a pen to draw the outline along with a system or drawn that rectangle to define the bounds of the rectangle and ellipse shapes. We can set the fill and outline colours using system or drawn dot colour like so, noting that the outline colour will be the colour of our line shape as well. We can set the outline thickness using the slider value, multiplying that by 2 for now, and also our pen to draw the outline with that thickness as a width. Then we can set the dash pattern of the pen if one of the line effect radio buttons is selected. Here we'll need to divide our original values by 2. So earlier we had 4 4 as our values for dash lines, this will become 2 2 here. Now that's sorted, we can focus on the selected shape using a switch statement, like so. Let's look at the rectangle first. We'll set the height from width to the rendered size of the rectangle shape. And then define the rectangle boundaries to start at halfway into the outline. That's why we multiply the outline thickness by 2. Going towards the bitmap height and width subtracting the outline thickness from this. We can easily set up the bitmap with a height and width like so. Then we draw the rectangle using the graphics class on the bitmap. The draw rectangle function will draw the outline and the fill rectangle will create a fill rectangle on top of that. We can copy this all over to the ellipse shape as well, making a few changes like so. The triangle shape is a bit less straightforward, as this class is a polygon of three points. We first set up the bitmap in the same way as before. But now we need to create a list of x and y values, as well as a list of system not drawn up point, to store our points, taking into account their position respective to the line thickness. So for example, if the point was at the edge of the bitmap, and we added an outline on top of that, that would spill outside of the image. So we need to make sure the triangle's outline is included in the image's boundaries. Similar to what we did in part 1, we'll need to identify which part of the triangle we're dealing with, and we can do this by looking at the minimum and maximum values. So let's start by adding in our current x and y values, removing any duplicates. We'll add in another for loop here, similar to the code in part 1 with a counter this time. We'll look at the x values first, and if we're looking at the maximum x value, we'll need to subtract the outline thickness from this value like so. Conversely, if we're looking at the minimum x value, we'll need to add the outline thickness to this value. If the value isn't a minimum or maximum value, it remains unaffected. Now we'll look at the corresponding y values. If the y value is a maximum y value, this means that this was a point with the maximum x value, and so we can update the point we created above, subtracting half the thickness from the y value. And conversely, if it's the minimum, we'll add the thickness to the y value. And this all comes with a bit of maths and trial and error to make sure the bitmap looks like the shape in the UI. We'll finish by incrementing the counter and drawing the triangle like before using the new points array.
Last year we've got the line shape. We simply create a bitmap using the rendered width of the line and the stroke thickness as a height. Then we draw the line using the graphics class, with the line shapes x1, y1, x2 and y2 values. Now we've drawn all our shapes, let's dispose of some variables. And then we can easily save the image using the save function, and I'll just add it into the pictures folder using environmental special folder like so. And finally a message box, just to say it's been exported. Let's try it out. So let's customise one or two of these shapes and click on export. And there we are, we now have a working application. If you're looking for an example app with a shape creator like this, and countless other features, I created a suite of WPF desktop apps that are all open source. Check out the link in the description to find out more. All of the codes for parts 1 and 2 are available on my website, so be sure to follow the link in the description down below. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe for more content still to come. Why not check out these videos on the channel as well? Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.